So to hit on the advocacy of running, you, you were just talking about pickleball and racquetball <laughs> and you play tennis and I ride a bike and people swim and do my wife does Zumba classes. Uh, my, uh, she dances all those things though. A lot of those things take money or equipment, or you got to go travel to do it. I do like the opportunity of running and, and advocate it as such, because you can just do it anytime, anywhere with well, I was going to say, you know, with a pair of shoes, and we're going to talk even about what kind of shoes and talk about some options. Um, I hate running because I never have a good excuse. I'm okay. <laughs> to not run. That's true. That's true. I mean, I've done it at uh, a hotel in the middle of the city and just to go outside. You and I did it that one time in the middle of yeah. Ohio, yeah. Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin, I think. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, it's one of the main things. Uh, I'll go to a city, and one of the first things I enjoy doing is to go for a run, explore, yeah, just to kind of help me get a feel for where I'm, where I am, especially yeah. if it is yeah, a big city. And I just kind of, I'm always coming back. Like I just did a trip with my wife and I'll come back and I can tell her, okay, so there's this store and this restaurant and I get my bearings and yeah. Well, so, but that, the fact that it is one of the easiest things to do. Um, and I do like that it, it can get us outside generally. And I know you do the treadmill a good bit when the weather's bad and whatever, but it is, it, it has that opportunity as well. And then as we're going to address in this, there are so many people who would be more prone to do it, but they struggle with injury, whether it's foot stuff, we'll talk to that, but there's also a lot of people just with joint pain and hip yeah. pain. Yeah. And that's was my experience, you know, that we'll get into, um, as well. So we'll talk about the, the injury, but to talk about, yeah, the benefits, obviously it's easily accessible. There's so many, I also am aware that there's so many. Uh, what can I say? Uh, affinity uh, group opportunities. I mean, you can find a running club. If you like right now here in our town, we have a, a uh, an aquatic center. Mm -hmm. I don't, actually, I have no idea, but I'm not aware. Is there like a swimming group, you know, and, and can we sign up for a swimming event? I mean, unless you're doing triathlons and stuff, you can't. And I don't know. I don't either. I'm, I'm not, not a swimmer. I'm not aware of that, but, that, but running in anywhere you can find generally a running club, a group of people that run, um, our little town has, I think they have some running club. So many places have it down in the Springs. They've got Jack Quinn's. It's an Irish restaurant pub thing. And they have a, you know, somebody sponsors a run and there's so many events that are so inspiring just to go to. I know a lot of people, and that is what they do. That's kind of their hobby that are not great runners. I mean, they're yeah. slow runners. They're not even super fit looking, but it's a healthy activity. They get out, they go to the event. The events are often just so inspiring just fun just people with those people. Yeah. yeah. And you got the people that are going for, you know, the finish line, a lot of people going for a PR and some people walking with a stroller. Yeah. Uh, so again, it, it just, it, it bodes well, uh, for that, for getting with groups, you can get accountability then with those groups. Like I know the Jack Quinn's, they go at six o'clock Tuesday nights all the time. And it's just, it's, it's an opportunity that you don't always have with other exercise Types sporting sports. Yeah. 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 Like even you at tennis. I mean, I, I don't know if there's not up here. Yeah. And, and can you do an event? Now you did a soccer league mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. That's, I guess, an opportunity for some people. Well, and now we're all into the, the coaching side of it and the youth side of it, mm -hmm. um, which is a big part of, of all of these sports is the youth side of it and the community. And, you know, today we we've, we've already got planned for tomorrow soccer and I'm so looking forward to, it's going to be the first, day of real spring for us yeah i think we had one two weeks ago and then it snowed again all week and so the outsideness the sun the green grass and talking with parents and and, and i go in my soccer skivvies and you know try to play with the kids yeah too yeah well and, and just think it's interesting to think about that with the little kids i mean my kids they're out at if they're out at recess they're running if they're at home outside they're running most of the sports ball sports especially they're running and if we go back to our, you know, back before this current uh, civilized time, I mean, we walked and ran everywhere. You and, or no, you didn't read it, but you were just talking about walking. I just read C.S. Lewis's, no, it wasn't C.S. Lewis. It was uh, uh, about, it was becoming Mrs. Lewis. It was about his, his ultimate wife. But in there, it just talked a lot about their daily life and they walked. Yeah. They, it was interesting because they would have had horses and carriages and all that kind of stuff back when he was living in England and they actually had cars during his time. Sure. Really? 
I don't remember. Yeah, you're right. World he wasn't II that old. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, they walked though. That, that, he would talk about that. He'd sit there and write and read and whatever. And then they would walk two miles to the pub, to the library, to the whatever. They just walked, which is just great. We don't do that these right. days. And sometimes I feel stupid for that, that I'm going to jump in my car, drive a mile down, grab something from the grocery, do something from the bank, you know, drive two and a half miles, come back here, park, get my running stuff on and go for a run. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's like the elevator in front of the gymnasium. Yes, <laughs> that picture. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, we've talked about that, but uh, the things that we that we uh, delegate manual labor that we could do, that we, yeah, so that we can go, then get we go in to our the cars gym and go to the gym. and go to the class yeah. and lift up things that we'll never ever need to lift up. That's true. Inanimate <laughs> objects. Yeah. Well, but everybody runs, and yeah. you mentioned the the grade school kids. And that's another, we talked about, remember the, the author of something about fitness and we, we see ourselves as athletic or not. We talked this morning about oh, right. young kids, um, um, about they, they play yeah. and they volunteer and, you know, a kindergartner always raises his hand. Oh, I'm an artist. Oh, I know how to do that. And they play until they get later. And, and, the, and they're happy to run. Now, they don't want to go jogging because that doesn't make any sense at all. But if you start them on a game of whatever, they'll go for hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, that data has been done, too, where they put a pedometer on a, you know, five, six-year-old, and it'll put you to shame. Oh, yeah. The, what they do on uh, just but – if, but the minute you say, hey, we're going to go on a hike or we're going to go on a jog, it's like, well, that's the dumbest thing ever for them. And, and, and culturally, we are, in, we are stuck, but we're coming back to this idea that everybody can run, everybody can walk, uh, can move at, at those kind of things. And it ought to be something that we see ourselves as athletes doing until we die. You know, I, I got to give you a sweet thing. So Nakota, he's my 11 year old, and he will go out on a run with me. But he'll come to and he'll run and, and he's proud to do that. And we'll jog along, but he'll have times He'll say, gosh, can we, you know, can we walk a little bit, just catch our breath or walk that hill? And I'll say, yeah. And he'll, we'll stop and he'll grab my hand and sit there. And I just, I feel like the that's best sweet. dad ever and the sweetest time ever. Yeah. It's just, it's such a, it, that's another thing. It's a, it's a thing that anybody can do. You're like the family. I mean, to go out for a walk, run, hike, which we do around here is so much easier to facilitate than if we're going to do biking, I'm invariably, oh, yeah, right. how are the tires? How are the, is, well, and then the, the, the the limits of the slowest person versus the fastest yeah, person sure. and if you're on any kind of a mountain it's a dramatic yeah you know because then we got to drive down to you know a flatter place mm -hmm. um and over in our neighborhood is a german family so the the two parents are first degree germans <laughs> they came from germany yeah and so their son had played in the soccer league that marcy coaches for a while and now he's older but we see him all the time walking yeah. As if it's a, as if they're strange looking, they don't look like, you know, a little, a little bit different, mm -hmm. but I, I missed that. And when we lived in Germany, my Marcy and I, we, we did do that almost every day. Yeah. Cause it was, the weather's great. It's outside. And we, and then we got to the point where it's like, oh, we relished that. We went with the stroller. It was great. Well, let's uphold that. I mean, walking, I mean, we, it is, you know, back to, we've done stuff and talked about some of the early episodes. We did one on, you know, exercise, but you ultimately just said, it's just, just move, just move, uh, whatever your movement is. But this one is, it's good for cardio. It, you know, it works out. It's not a whole full body workout. Now you can sit there and, you know, pump your arms. And I, I saw a lady the other day running, holding weights, weights. in her hands. Yeah. yeah. And, and you could do some things to be more mobile. And I would advocate for that as opposed to, cause you can shuffle along and not move a whole lot, but even walking, you know, and brisk walking and, you know, include some stairs and some Hills, just think about doing that every day. You're not going to end up being the person who can't move, who can't get up off the couch, who is out of breath, walking upstairs somewhere. So, you know, again, the advocacy for that, but let's hit on injury because that is, well, I put it as probably number one, if we're talking to the over 40, over 50 crowd as, well, why don't you do that? People would say, gosh, I'd really like to do that. And um, number one is still going to be time. Do you remember what number yeah. two is? No. I don't have enough energy. energy yeah, well, number three is going to be injury. Yeah. Right. So oh, I would, but you know, I hurt my knee. I hurt my back. I hurt something else. And, and so 
we're not telling those people to just say, you know, grin and bear it and get out there. Mm -hmm. You have to do it in the right way. But I would tell the people who don't yet hurt who can, the best way to be becoming the person who isn't going to be hurt by life. Because if you're not running or moving or whatever else, then you're going to hurt yourself bringing in the groceries mm -hmm. or just tripping on a step because your balance is off is to be out there moving and doing. And so what about the niggling knee pain, the niggling back pain, the niggling plantar fasciitis, heel pain, foot pain, um, or, or soreness that doesn't go away? You know, are those the kind of things that should keep you on the couch and saying, oh, I would do that. But uh, the wise choice here is for me to not do that. Mm -hmm. And we can't answer that question over the radio for you, right? It's somebody's yeah. going to have to go with their gut, but Go ahead and bring well, let's up unpack injury. some of it. So yeah. it came. I don't know exactly how you and I got on the same tangent with it, but I know that it was I don't know now six eight years ago something like that. And I it was Father's Day. My Father's Day gift to myself is I went on a two hour run. So I went up to the high mountain lake, you know, near us, and did a two hour run. Everything was great mentally and overall physically, but my it was kind of a, a turning. Uh, kind of a crux of my back hurts, my back and my hip, something is wrong. I don't know if you remember, but somehow it was right around then somebody referred Night it. Night chains. No, 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 oh. no. Somebody referred uh, us the book born to run. Oh. Do you remember the stuff? Somehow you and I ended up on it together. We read it together mm -hmm. and I don't know if there, I can't remember the catalyst. So anyway, so, you know, for me that happened. And then we get this born to run book, which if you type born to run, it's by Chris McDougal, Chris McDougal. And it's a, and, and to cut to the chase, he talks about minimalist running and talks about issues, lots of controversy there. And I will invariably, I'll probably get a bad review on it. Like we did on talking about prolonged fasting. That's terrible. And you know, it's stupid read, read the book. Um, it's a well, one, it's a really entertaining book. Yeah. That's a great read, just an entertaining read, but then it does talk about this minimalist running and this guy. So McDougal was a journalist. I mean, I think he's a runner and an athlete, but he's a journalist. And his story was he went down to Mexico, like in some native area, just to cover the story of these runners, these runners. And what he ultimately came back with is why do we have all these, even elite runners, uh, who you know, in America, especially, and they get 50, 60 and they don't run anymore because they're injured. He goes down here and witnesses these little kind of natives that run more, run 90 longer year old, and run forever. Yeah. 90 year old guys in sandals made out of, t uh, of tires. tires and they're just running and having fun injury free. And he's just going, why it's kind of like the French paradox that we talk about, you know, the Fr French eat yeah. late, eat high fat foods, eat all this stuff that we say don't do. And they're healthier than we are. Yeah. So it's kind of this paradox. So he goes down and that's where the story is, is and looking at it, but he does cite some, um, some history on, you know, shoes that we began. Well, think back again, when, when did we first start running? We weren't wearing shoes. We were barefoot. Uh, and I, that was during the time. I know that was another thing. That was during the time when we had the elite runners, Ethiopia at guys house, yeah. at my house. And they were telling us stories of they never had shoes until high school. Yeah. And that they just run all day. They'd run two miles to school, run two miles home to eat because they didn't, food wasn't provided, run two miles back. And then after school, run two miles home. And I said, did you guys have like recess and play? Oh yeah. What'd you guys do? I ran, play soccer, <laughs> run around. So they're running constantly in those shoes. Well, now they're elite runners sponsored by Nike or whatever, but their form is really different much more forefront. And so that's what this guy, if you remember, do you remember the, he talked about, was it Harvard or Stanford runners? Do you remember that? No, it's, it's Oregon and oh, Nike. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's Oregon and Nike and, and, and the elite runners and, and Nike came around and, and mm -hmm. the, the big, and this is in the 60s, 70s when jogging started to become popular. And, uh, and so now it's, it's okay. How do we in, enhance human performance here can we put a shoe on somebody's foot and help them to run faster and and the thought then back then was lengthen your stride heel strike get more efficient and in order to do that you got to put a shoe on because it hurts and so they made those shoes and then the story goes you know so the nike rep comes and shows up at the university and the team is training and all his shoes are in a pile and mm -hmm. the coach says something effective you know i'm so sorry they just run better without them but we'll have them wear them during the race you know so that people see them 
And it's some of the talks about why did we, as the shoes got fancier and higher tech, we seem to have a correlation of more injuries. And, and that's, that's what the coach had said. It was, thank you for the new shoes. But if they run in their old ones, their form is better yeah. and they don't have as much injury. And of course, like you mentioned on the front side, this is controversial. It, it's not true of everybody all the time. Um, it, well, what got me though, is, is thinking about not to make this a spiritual thing or whatever, but how, whatever you, whatever you believe to go back. And when did we get to the point of going, you know what, you know, God did a pretty good job. He really screwed our feet up. We got to, right, we're going to have that. to fix this. Yeah. We're going to have to fix that. Our feet we need really good support. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he didn't do it. And uh, you know, in the book, they talk about the, it's the antithesis of an arch would be to support it, support it from underneath. Yeah. It's supposed to be strong. So there, you know, if you, I just want people to think about that, make your own conjecture, read the book or go, you know, go read about minimalist running barefoot running. You'll see lo again, lots of controversy. You'll see stuff that, Oh, we did a study and everybody who did it got injured. We think you have to do it right. You have to do it well. Well, I just want people to think about it though. It'd be like saying right now, if we took 10 people off the street and said, okay, everybody start doing burpees, 10 burpees every hour. I did that yesterday. I set my thing and just 10 burpees. 10 every burpees. Hour. Yeah. And we did that. Most of them, we get injured. Why? Cause they don't do burpees. Ready for it. We'd yeah. have shoulder injuries and aches and pains. So uh, if you go from a lifetime as me, and so I was a bad heel striker going back to my father's day, I was a bad heel striker. So I got big and I was in custom orthotics. So oh, I had wow. carbon fiber orthotics supporting my arch, all these mm -hmm. things that in the book, they're going, well, again, destroying your arch. Or, or, I'm, or mm -hmm. I, I never asked myself, huh, God screwed my feet up. Uh, and so, well, yeah, so I, I was doing, doing that and to go back and go, why, why, why should we not be able to run? Like, why were these Ethiopian guys able to run barefoot? What did they do? Did God make their feet different and just bless them? And so where did we get that? So it's a good question to ask. First off, why do we think we have to have all the support? Do you remember the one Olympic athlete, the woman? Zel, Zel, Zola Bud. Zel, yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I was dumbstruck. Oh, it's like she, she's the barefoot. dumbest person ever. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, this poor person. Can she not afford? She, <laughs> I will give her. Or I just thought she's just being some kind of a show off. I, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the, the arrogance of our thought process there. Mm -hmm. My dad was a uh, summer student missionary in Africa. And this is a same thing, but just the, the, the thought process. And he was in his twenties and he thought, Oh, these poor natives have to have a bowel movement three times a day. Oh. Instead, so I only go every other day, this giant log, like a normal human American advanced normal, <laughs> normal American. Yeah. And the construct there, he really thought that they, oh, the poor people have to go all because they eat this horrible stuff called fiber, vegetables, <laughs> real food. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and, and we're saying the same thing about, oh, these poor children can't even put shoes on their feet. And it's like, well, God love them. I know. <laughs> the blessing of that on your feet and the splayed out and the strength of it and, and all of that. Yeah, we, we grew up, remember the white shoes? Yeah. That your mom took your first pictures in uh -huh. and they're like, they're like bricks. Yes. And they conform your feet to the shoes rather than the other way around. <laughs> so terrible. Yeah. 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 And so, and I've got my kids and, and we've of course advocated for that. And they spend most of the time during the summer barefoot and they'll be running down our gravel driveway. Yeah. I just, I can't, I, I can't even, still I still can't either because we have tender feet. And so I'm, you know, we're not advocating that everybody live barefoot but we're saying let's think about this and that's what this guy did a study on in the book born to run he, he studied that and so we can tell our story real quick but I, I want people to hear i have shared this with so many people who i run across who say oh yeah i used to run but i can't now because of injury and i say look just check the book out check out the concept and have had a good number of them going oh my gosh i am able to run again so that's what yeah. we're holding up a possibility justin. for luke savage justin oh that was back in when in our days and when I first met him and he was talking about knee pain and all of that and he became a hundred miler. Well, so oh, well, so I do want people to think about think about if you have this big, thick cushion on the back of your heel, it enables you to hit the ground heel strike without pain. Now, if you're the Ethiopian guy out there and they're running on rocks and whatever, you can't do that. So what does it do? It forces them to run with more of a forefront landing where you do have the pad. Cushion on your foot but if you think about the dynamics you literally are now leaning forward more 
And that's what the argument is, or the sharing in the book is that it changes your form and you're now not hitting so hard structurally. And as it transmits through to your everything, yeah, your hips, hips and, back, and everything. Yeah. And now you're doing it correctly. And so now here I, you know, after we transitioned and we both did it poorly, but after we transitioned, then I found myself, you know, two years later running two my uh, two hours, zero pain, zero pain in great, in great times by, because of my form overall changed forced by now I don't have this opportunity to slam my heel into the ground yeah. and do that. So that's the concept that you can, you know, again, lots of controversy, but I don't think the controversy personally, I don't think it lands it, 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 it pays out. And there could be somebody who does have a literal problem, a foot problem, and the support is just, you know, you're broken enough and, and you do need that support. I guess that's out there, but I think, well, and I would say there's, there's less controversy these days because of, of what you just said, that, that it's a recognition that there's different forms, there's different people, there's going to be different shoe types and whether you're a, a pronator and under over pronator and uh, all of those kind of things are kind of like everything else. It's just way more complex than the, than we thought. Mm -hmm. But if you're like what we want to do to help people out there think the likelihood of most humans is that you're going to be better off if you can be minimal, if you can lean forward, if you're going to be a four foot striker, that's more likely truer for more people. It, well, let's talk. So one of the things about that is having a shoe that does not have lift. So what we are, you and I are generally looking for in all shoes is zero, they call it zero drop. So right. forget about the, even the cushion at this point. It's just saying, why does it make sense that we need to elevate the have back a heel? Yeah, right. have a heel. Yeah. yeah. So I'm in, what am I wearing today? I'm wearing some limbs shoes. -E and I'm wearing ultra. And you're wearing ultra. So I have very little cushion or they're very, you know, no drop. Uh, they're just flat and even and very minimalist. You're in ultras, which have no drop, but you have a big cushion. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, there's debates on that. You, right. you, you, I do it because I don't ever sit down. It, you stand all day standing. Yeah, stand, that, yeah. Like standing on those all day. Like it did at, by the end of the day, my thought was my feet hurt. Yeah. Rather than I'm getting stuff done. So, well, maybe, maybe you're standing more than you should sedentary or whatever, yeah. but didn't you read a, a lady recently who talked about, it was more of a barefoot thing of going, gosh, yeah, but then the rocks hurt. She said, well, that should make you run according to the terrain and be aware of it. It's kind of right. Wasn't that it, you? Uh, yeah. She is a, footologist not okay. a doc but in the physiology of feet the, the cool thing and you can find these things on youtube if you see somebody running barefoot and it's in the super slow-mo mm -hmm. and where your toes actually reach out and they try to feel and then land and yeah. that that motion so she's all into that and the physiology and healing people that are really broken and the guy that was the doc that was interviewing her was like well yeah no when i teach people to transition i tell them get barefoot and go on a really nice green grassy field yeah and she's like uh no because you want to teach your feet to protect themselves remember in the book how that says watch a two-year-old go run through the rocks and kind of scamper scamper yeah. yeah and and that's kind of the tara humara it was more or less of a run and more of a scamper yeah the indians in mexico and that theoretically would be the would be then the best longevity kind of run, not for power, not for pace, not for performance, not for those kind of things, but for longevity and healthiness to your feet would be the fun scampering on your toes. But you have to protect yourself. Your feet have to feel their environment. And if you're all relaxed on the beach or on the on the grass, then when you go onto the asphalt or onto the something else that you you've You've not trained your foot to be aware. So well, and yeah, and again, there's people on the extreme side. And I saw a guy, he was training with Rich Roll, uh, yeah. Rich Roll, famous guy mm -hmm. now. And this dude is total barefoot and it showed his feet. And my gosh, they were like pads. I mean, he had built up, he could run on anything. We're not, I'm not going to do that. I don't I'm just, want to spend the time that he took. Yeah. To get I mean, there. we live up where it's cold a lot and stuff and I'm going to wear shoes. So again, this is a call it, like you say, the spectrum of, right. you know, we're just talking. So I wear, 
I don't run barefoot. I wear minimalist stuff. Sometimes you talked about it's, you know, whether it's for performance, I want to perform. I like running fast. So when I'm doing it on these mountain trails and we've got the rocks and stuff, I want something that's going to protect me from a rock bruise. Cause I don't want to pay attention to that. Maybe, you know, that lady would say I sh for overall best health of my feet, I should, but we're trying to make everybody have an incremental gain uh, here right. and be able to just go out and move. Right. Be it's becoming a little bit better. If you want to run a marathon barefoot, you can do that probably. Yeah. Um, but if you just want to be able to run, you pick how far you want to go. But I, I am going to say we're advocating or uh, that you would question and go read if you want to, to figure out that of uh, uh, zero drop shoes, you know, let your foot be flat on the ground. Uh, right. the heels don't really make sense. It's, I don't know. Let it stretch out your Achilles. Otherwise, it, you, when you wear a heel, you're shortening the angle from calf all the way around to forefoot. Yeah. You shorten that angle. So all of your, your Achilles, the, the muscle, the soleus, and then on, on the arch, you're also shortening it. So, and if you walk around in heels eight, nine, 10 hours a day, and then eight hours at night where your foot is, is relaxed, also shortened. So the Achilles tightness and the foot tightness just gets shorter and tighter over time, increasing the chance of injury. Let's also say though, as we encourage people to go yeah, lean into minimalist, lean into zero drop, do it slowly. Um, well, and that's just, our, we both read the book. We thought, oh, this is the coolest ever. I got the literal little sandals, like just barely anything <laughs> over your feet. And then pretty quick, we both got injured. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with, was it, was it plantar fasciitis? My, or? Mine was, mine what was, was the other one. The other, what's the other injury foot, common foot injury called i can't remember i don't know well, we both injured our feet and then couldn't run at all right for then you, yeah six months and then we went into it slowly and so wisely wisely yeah yeah because again we can't i mean i was i we lived i lived i had been living for years in heels custom orthotics supporting my arch whatever yeah. and then so to transition so it took me a long time it took my wife hardly at all but what we realized is she just naturally oh because she was a dancer she she's a yeah. lifetime dancer so she was used to being on her forefront i mean ballet and stuff. she also uh, probably has high arches oh yeah super and high so arches. There's no shoe that supports her arch yeah like there's no shoes like my oh, wife too got, with these really yeah. high arches well and and so to that so when we start you and i started i measured my foot and I can't remember the timeline. It's been so long now, a year later, whatever my short, my foot had gotten a little shorter because my heel had grown in strength and tightened up. I mean, it wasn't huge. I don't even know if it was half a, half a shoe size, but it had. And then I've spent, you know, years and years at home barefoot. That was part of my training. It was at home, be barefoot and even try to think about not clunking my feet we have concrete floors downstairs so that's great and to think about being more it changed my form of walking even mm -hmm. um so uh, again we're talking about a, a retraining so that we can be injury -free. walk and be injury free when you're 60 70 80 90 doing what you need to do and, and we are talking about running form and you can go look a lot about running form and even that i'll see people who are out running and that tendency to shuffle to have your shoulder you know to be hunched over and stuff and you can look at good look at a good runner they're also i mean you have great posture anyways but i, I tend to think about it more when i'm running to think kind of ch chest out shoulders back and and chin up even that i'm really have what? you thought about that as we've done the breathe breath work? Yeah, I my I'm struggling with my posture. I've even oh, I I can totally tell because I will in the winter and I I value reading a book on the treadmill, but trying to keep the mouth closed, and but I'm reading so I'm looking down. Yeah, and to hold that up makes a dramatic difference in the efficiency of air transfer. Yeah, which is going to impact your running quality and 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 all of that. I, I, I spent so much time biking too. And you're Which by proxy, over your bike, totally. bike and, definition. And yeah. I spent years and hundreds of thousands of miles as a pro cyclist doing that kind of stuff. So, you know, posture, thinking about that's another part, you know, we're talking, we keep talking about feet, but talk about, you know, you were talking about feet, the shoes, how your feet hit the, the earth, your, what would you say? Your, your forward, as opposed to backwards, your stance, your stance. Okay. okay. And then your posture too, just of your back. How are you holding yourself? All those things add into why we tend to get uh, injured. But, but also, I mean, anybody who hasn't been running, who starts, you just got to go slow. If you're overweight, 
it's another, I mean, the, the pressure on your pressure. knees and yeah. everything else. So there's so many factors again. So we're talking about anybody who wants to do this. I mean, if you don't want to you know, you can go ride a bike, there's low impact, you can go swim it, but a lot of people just aren't going to make the effort to do that. So here's, Running is easy to do because there's a, the excuse level goes way down. Yeah. Or again, or even for a walk, anybody can do that. Even generally at night after dinner to just go for a walk, even if it's not brisk, but you know, the more you can do, um, the better I, I did want to talk about some of the things with running, uh, that I think help it as well. Cause we do tend to think of jogging. If you think about the American, you know, you say, Hey, do you run? It's a kind of a basic jog at the same speed. And if anything, you'll hear people go, yeah, I'm just trying to run two miles without stopping, you mm -hmm. know, without walking or whatever. And I have seen, I mean, it's great that they're doing it, but I cringe a little bit when I see the older person out there who's been running forever and they're just shuffling and they're hardly moving. Mm -hmm. They're so stiff. They're hunched over. They're shuffling along. It's again, it's great compared to their peer. Who's in a wheelchair at the nursing home drooling, but to think Could about they spend the time and be a little bit better. Yeah. So to think about things like, um, and I got some of this from the runners that live with, they do so many different exercises and techniques. So they'll spend a day and say, yeah, we're doing uh, speed work and they'll do, they'll do speed work. And to think about that, it totally changes your form. They'll do high kicks, you know, and the kids in school, uh, my kids in, in cross country and track, they'll do high kicks. They'll do sprints. They'll do hills. They'll do steps. Um, I, I, I got in the habit. Sometimes I'll do like you're running along, think about running along and then do a 360 while you're running. Right. And keep going forward. I mean, you got to kind of twist your feet around. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's killer just for balance and coordination. And you're getting your mind around it. I thought, Mike, I want to be the 90 year old guy who can do that. And most 90 year olds can't stand on one foot, but so many things you can do around running and not, and, and, and sometimes yesterday I went out and I did kind of intervals. I ran faster than I'm capable of doing for a long period of time until I'm out of breath. And then I stopped and walked. I didn't, it wasn't some suffer pain fest. I walked and thought and whatever, but changing it up is the point. Cross training. Just, cross training, just like yep. with weights. And they say, chain, uh, what is it? Uh, not muscle. muscle memory. Yeah, but what's the confusion? Mu yeah, the opposite of muscle memory. Yeah. But to think about that, I see runners sometimes that I just, uh, the same guy shuffling along and go, oh man, just take a break off of your normal shuffle and do a sprint or do some stairs or do some high knees and, and pump your arms. And one of my kids at Canyon mm -hmm. is real bad about, he won't move his arms much. And to really, you look at good runners and they're pumping their arms. So yeah. And in that you're using more. We have a lot of people around here in Colorado who I'll see using the sticks. Yeah. Not, I walking guess not sticks. running. I guess not it's running, walking. but walking yeah. sticks, hiking sticks. Yeah. Is a, is is a different kind of a hike. Yeah, and I think again, it just kind of it changes it up. And I see some people. I feel like they get imprisoned. I'm thinking, no, running is going outside and trying to for two or three miles not stop running. And what they do is just kind of end up stuck in a plateau of the same pace, the same form, the same whatever. And give yourself. I have to give myself permission to stop. I mean, I'm going to sprint, and then I'm I'm going to stop and I'm going to walk a little bit. I'm not getting any points here. Right. I, what you just said helped me out a lot of saying, just give yourself permission. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to hurt. Yeah. I don't, I don't need to hurt. And people, I want to lean into challenge, but I don't, I don't need to hurt. I am here to be outside. I'm here to, to, to jog, to, to move, to do those kind of things. But I'm also here to listen and learn because there's always something in my ears uh, or walking with a book or something like that, 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 and I noticed that, like you said, I can walk and think, but I, it's harder to run and think. In my, yeah. I can run and listen, mm -hmm. but if it's me, I, I'm thinking about my breathing and my feet and my this and my that, and I just want to think in my own head. So I give myself permission. Well, to I want to do that. There's a lot of people like you who listen to podcasts like this uh, while they're running. It's a great way to get double benefit. Yes. For me, yeah. it's a very valuable time to be spent doing two things. Yeah. I don't uh, listen to anything. I enjoy the time of nothing. So even when I was a pro cyclist, I didn't listen. I don't listen to music. Didn't listen to anything. It was kind of a meditative thing. And sometimes I'll realize I'm riding or running to the point of effort that I appreciate that I can't think of anything, man. I'm just caught up in effort and, you know, some pain and stuff. And I dig that, that it clear. It's almost a mind That's clearing a flow. Yeah. Yeah. Now other times though, I will go out. And sometimes if I have something on my mind, a certain focus, 
uh, I'm able to get good clarity and focus on a specific idea. I get frustrated when I realize I'm just scatterbrained thinking of mm -hmm. stuff and I'll just try to be, just be present and realize that that's Pike's peak. Would you enjoy the mm -hmm. scenery uh, a little bit? So a lot of stuff you can do. Yeah. For the mental, your mental wellness or capability or stretching along, you know, along with that. And some of that too, you talked about flow. So I had uh, Stephen Kotler on the Ziegler show recently. And he, his latest book is the art of the impossible, but his company, his business is flow. Uh, it's like flow research or something like that. And he talks a lot. He's a big athlete. He talks a lot about that, about being in flow, being in that mm -hmm. state of just, you know, you're just grooving along. But the thing I posed to him, I thought, I thought it's kind of hard to do that unless you have some level of mastery. I don't know if you're going to, you're not going to find flow running as a new runner when you're trying to think Correct. about, I, I think that's fair. And I would also go into the cross training that if you are a person who can meditate, can, can breathe, can mm -hmm. do breath work, can sit there in, and be in the three to five minute category, some level of mastery. I would say that guy as a new runner is going to get to a runner's high. Yeah. Quicker. Yeah. And, and I would even challenge him with that, that this is another, uh, like the muscle confusion. Train your body to reach flow when you're just sit, sitting there. Train yeah. your body to reach flow with mindfulness, meditation, breath, and heart work. And then also there's the, the, the athletic performance side of that, that most athletes will say, I'm in the zone. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't miss the basket. Uh, it, it, it all just feels right. It's working for me. That's the flow state, which I've experienced in running and cycling. That's it. I've never experienced flow with tennis or uh, I did do swimming for a season one time and finally got to that point where I could just cruise along, but it took a long time. But to that, I want to hear, you know, for people to say, I mean, if you, this is one of those things you, we had a friend, you know, he said, I hate running. If you hate running then do something else, right. this is something that said, uh, I had, it was a great experience recently. I think I've talked about it, but my son Canyon, who last year did cross country for the first, I mean, he had run and doing some races as a kid, but then had a, a bit of a gap. We got him in cross country. He said, I just, I, I hate it. I don't like running, but we said, you got to do something. And so he chose that because his brother was doing it, did his first race. And did like 37 minutes, which for a high school kid who's in pretty good shape, I said, dude, what, come on, were you crawling? What, what happened? We, we couldn't go because of COVID. So we weren't there. I didn't see it. And he said, I just had no will. I just don't like it. I, whatever, but you know, he kind of kept at it next race and they were gapped out because they, all the kids couldn't do the same races every week because of, again, COVID stuff. So it was a couple of weeks later, whatever he does something like a 27 which is still for a high school kid, not real fast, but that's a huge improvement. Yeah. Then he just, and I heard from his, his other brother that he was kind of being more social and talking about it, whatever last race, he almost went under 24, which that's a pretty respectable time. I and mean, it's not, you know, 15 minute world record pace or anything like that, but pretty good. And he, but he also said, I just, I'm, I get it. I get it, dad. Mm -hmm. I get how you can kind of enjoy it. That has been my experience with most people. If you will stick with it mm -hmm. enough and also listen to this, have permission. You don't have to kill yourself every day and, and try to enjoy it. Do some things that are fun along with it, that most people, if they continue to do it, will find some joy or at least less misery. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Uh, yeah. The same is true for tennis, Kevin, sure. well, and swimming. Okay. Right, right. That, you, that you will do that. So, uh, I, yeah, the, again, the book Born to Run is a great read. It's really informative. You can go look at that. But you can put in minimalist running or running form, find a lot in there. I am personally going to question if you hear negative about minimalist running because it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and I think some of the studies don't stand up real well. But, you know, we'll probably get criticism for this. Check it out. See what you think. But I want to hopefully have given some opportunity and possibility that you can run and address some of the things that are keeping you from running and have that benefit. It running is also the pathway. If people think about injury, it's also the pathway to healing. And I, I would say every human is born to run, to be able to run until they die mm -hmm. in their nineties. It's truer of walking. And, and that's where I think, you know, if somebody's already in their 70s and they're already, they've lived 70 years of leading to brokenness, 
then are they going to be able to go run? And there's less likely of a chance there. But for us in our 30s, 40s, 50s, to be becoming the kind of person who can still run and enjoy it in 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, I think is kind of close to a baseline. We ought to be able to. I wish I was living a lifestyle where I ran to my office. And then I've I've lamented this so often. I, again, when we were in Germany and I rode my bike to work, 99% 99% of the time, yeah. rain, or, rain or shine. It just, and I, I cherished it. And yeah. it's, it's such a missing piece in a non-biking friendly country and town and state. Um, oh, I lived in Holland and everybody rode it was, everywhere. Yeah. Old and that is a part old. of their culture and why they get much more credit than our culture for being happy and well-adjusted and yeah. all of those things. Yeah. But again, it's not, and it's not that uh, my life doesn't work that way. I mean, anywhere I'm going, I'm usually getting a kid. You're getting a pile right. of groceries. I, you're getting get stuff. It. So I, we didn't have any kids at the time. <laughs> thus, like this, we're going to finish this thing, and you're going to go I'm out. Gonna for, go for I'll a run. Job. I'm going to go for a ride. But uh, well, hey, hopefully this is a help to some of you who are interested in running. Yeah.